When Jesus began preaching that the kingdom of God is at hand, he meant that the long-promised enjoyment of God's salvation for which Israel had been waiting was now there for them to enter into. How were they to enter into it? By becoming Jesus' disciples, by giving him their heart's loyalty, and letting him reshape their lives, by receiving forgiveness from him, by identifying with his concerns, by loving him without reserve, and giving his claims precedence over all others. When you pray that the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven, envision conflict being resolved, marriages and families healed, truth told, and people faithful to one another, initiatives that break through the vicious cycles of retaliation, and love that creates new community among people through forgiveness, reconciliation, and peacemaking. As Christians, we are not opposed to boundaries. The gap between the world and the kingdom of God ought to be made clear. While we are not opposed to boundaries, God's kingdom enables us to be opposed to the way the world sets up boundaries. On the basis of gender, class, race, economic, or accent. The second main petition in the Lord's Prayer, Thy Kingdom Come, rules out any idea that the kingdom of God is a purely heavenly, that is, otherworldly, reality. Think of the vision at the end of Revelation. It isn't about humans being snatched up from earth to heaven. The holy city, the new Jerusalem, comes down from heaven to earth. God's space and ours are finally married, integrated at last. This prayer is a cry of hope and yearning, a sigh of longing, even a despairing plea, all rooted in God's hope. To be in between is painful. We get tired, frustrated, discouraged. We want to have arrived. We want to see the building complete and whole. We want God's kingdom fully among us. Instead, we live the reality that while the kingdom has indeed arrived, it is not yet complete. In this in-between reality, we pray, Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, in Jesus Christ. His followers have witnessed the kingdom of God breaking in on earth. They have seen Satan crushed and the power of the world, sin and death, broken. The kingdom of God is still exposed to suffering and strife. The flock has a share in that tribulation. They stand under the sovereignty of God and the new righteousness. But in the midst of that persecution, God grant that the kingdom of Jesus Christ may grow in his church on earth. God hasten the end of the kingdoms of this world and establish his own kingdom in power and glory. 